Hello everyone, this is Matt Hoots here with Ask Matt. I've got a very good question here on my YouTube channel. Um, they're actually responding to a video that I created talking about like a fake vent hood um, that we saw in a real estate listing. However, there are some things in their comment that really concern me and I want to address those and see how I can help this person out. Now, Sandra, uh, she moved to the US and she says she's got some health issues, especially dealing with indoor air quality. So. Um, the first thing I want to talk to talk about is right here. Um, her the moving inside or moving to the U.S. She moved to North Carolina, and again, North Carolina still is a humid climate zone. So maybe there's some indoor air quality issues related to humidity, which is triggering some other things with inside the house. So the first thing we need to do for this house is make sure the indoor air quality in your existing house is good. So we need to find the source of all the triggers, the things that are. Uh, triggering uh, where you're getting these, these reactions to your house. Uh, it could be high humidity, which is uh, causing mold to grow. It could be something that's uh, some toxins inside the house. It could be dust mites. There's lots of things that can happen because of high humidity inside the house. So when you get that humidity level between 40 and 60% by using a whole house dehumidification system. Well, in addition to that, we also need to find the source of where the air is coming in from the outside. It could be in an older house, it could be a very leaky house. So we need to make sure that that's taken care of. Um, I'd also recommend, depending on the zone that you're in, getting the house tested for radon. Uh, really the best thing overall for you to do is find a home performance contractor in your zone, uh, do a whole house performance test, uh, do some air sampling, see what's in the air. Um, if you have carpets, definitely recommend getting rid of the carpets. Anything that can hold uh, allergens to trigger your allergies, um, other reactions. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, basically you, you've got uh, acute rhinitis, which, you know, can be triggered by lots of things inside the house. So that's the first thing we need to get your main house. Uh, we need to get fresh air into there, uh, good ventilation. Again, this can be through a uh, supply strategy. Uh, you can have some exhaust uh, ventilation in the areas where you have uh, high concentrations of moisture. To, to get that moisture out of there so we can work on your indoor air quality. But also you might wanna consider an ERV. So it's probably a mixture of all three of those, but ventilation will help with that, along with finding the source of all the allergens inside your house and cleaning the house. So that's, that's the first thing. Again, a home performance contractor can help you with that. The second thing I want to address, um, and this kind of worries me. So you're planning to turn a tool shed into an art studio and I guess the cool thing is you got a she shed, which I, I think is you know a nice alliteration to it. Um, the 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 uh, I guess what I'm, what I'm worried about here. So you've got you want fresh air in there, but you're using um, basically you have oil and turpentine. Now inside your house, you do have pollutants and toxins and stuff like that, and we're trying to get that out of your out of your house. And and, and those are just inadvertent things that are inside your house. You might have some VOCs just from cleaning and stuff like that, for the, but for the most part, it's particulate matter, it's water vapor. These things are easier to manage. So now you're trying, you're creating a, a new environment, a very small environment where you want to have it conditioned, but you're also intentionally using things that off gas, very, very harmful uh, uh, fumes. And in this case, I, I'm going to recommend um, picking a medium and picking a type of paint or whatever to that doesn't off gas. Uh, I know this, I know your heart is probably set on something like this. Um, otherwise, if you really want to use the oil painting and have the turpentine, again, these are not good for you to breathe. Uh, paint with the mask, uh, get a special mask that can actually, has the filters on it that can take out some of these v, those volatile organic compounds. Um, if you're worried about humidity, I mean, it's gonna be very expensive to create a, uh, a shed that one has conditioned air, two has good exhaust and also can take care of the humidity at the same time because you're going to be cycling through that air so often just to get the bad air out that it's gonna be impossible to condition that new air that's coming in. So if you have to do this um, in the shed, uh, paint, leave the doors wide open, that natural ventilation, uh, maybe have a fan just so you can have some fresh air, but definitely do this while waking, uh, wearing a mask it's going to be nearly impossible to control the humidity. Again, even if you kept the door shut and you're bringing in, you're exhausting out that bad air, bringing in that new air, the new air is going to be humid air because that area is so small that humid air is going to be nearly impossible to 
take the humidity out quick enough at you know at the same rate that you're exhausting. I mean, you're, you're gonna be exhausting 20, 30, probably 50 times an hour, which is very high, and whatever mechanical equipment you have is not going to be able to keep up with that. Um, I mean, sometimes I have to do things that are less than uh, healthy in my house, and and some of these chemicals because you know some of these binding agents. Um, you know, there's not a water-based option for it, and there is some immediate off-gassing. I try not to do these things inside my house, inside my building envelope. I'll do them in my garage, which is not really a garage, it's a shop. Leave the garage door wide open, have some fans on, so, you know, we've got good circulation. Again, it's not always comfortable outside. It may be, you know, hot, maybe humid, but at least I have fresh air. Um, and sometimes I'll actually wear a mask if I think the, uh, the fumes are too much, and especially if I'm doing anything that's involving sanding. Um, I don't want those particulates in my, in my lungs, so I'll wear a mask. And uh, I've got some good masks that we're going to talk about at the end of this video. Um, and also, sometimes I'll uh, wear that mask or a different mask if, if I'm do, you know, sanding, but also have some, sanding something that has VOCs in it because uh, I don't want to breathe those. Um, or using something that is off-gassing, I don't want to breathe that. So it's all about your health. Try to create an environment where you can live in it in a healthy manner. You're not always going to be in the ideal environment, so sometimes you need to wear uh, special filtration and protect your body, protect your lungs, so you don't get sick. Hopefully this answers your question. So Sandra, in summary, for your main house, I want you to have good air filtration. Um, I recommend the, the April Air, at least a MERV 13, uh, if not higher, uh, filtration system. This is going to get a lot of the particulates out of the air, so you can breathe easier. Uh, also look at a whole house dehumidification system. Uh, what this is going to do is keep that humidity level just right. Now, if your house is, now you are in one of those colder uh, climate zones, um, you know, moving up the Atlantic. So in the wintertime, the humidity level may go too low. Again, can affect uh, the air that you're breathing. So if your house is very leaky, you may have to consider also adding humidification during the winter months so you can have uh, that nice 50% plus or minus 10% relative humidity all year, all year long. Now again, for your she shed, I recommend just, if you have to use these toxic chemicals, wear a mask, put the doors wide open, use a fan. Uh, the mechanical equipment in that small bit area is not gonna make a difference. Um, but definitely do not do this in, in that area without ventilation and without the doors closed. I know this is gonna be a little bit more difficult during the winter months. Uh, it is gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable, but you know, my recommendation is to, you know, in the off seasons, maybe if you have to do the artwork, Pick a different medium, pick some, pick uh, applicants, uh, chemicals that are less toxic, definitely stay away from the turpentine. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about not introducing new VOCs into your built environment for you to breathe is I actually had a family member that died as a result of this. He would, did a lot of refinishing in his basement, had improper ventilation, and unfortunately contracted cancer as a result. So this is very serious, especially if you already have an acute issue and you have other uh, health concerns that you're dealing with. Thanks again for watching this video and for you making it all the way to this point, we are going to allow you to enter to get a prize. Make a comment in the section below, hopefully it's a good comment. And what we're gonna do is do a random drawing using an app that I have um, in 30 days from now. So you have 30 days to, to make the comment and whoever wins that is going to get a pair of masks and this is worth about forty dollars with a mask so uh, all you have to do is make a quick comment what you think about ventilation and we're going to give something that where you can breathe easier in public uh, again this is sponsored by, by zanano mask it's zanano thanks